five red flags you need to look out for when you're dating somebody. Watch this. What is going on, YouTube? It is your man's Mr. Dominic Cruz, featured on ABC, NBC, CBS, Yahoo, and Fox, coming at you with another video. Yes, another one, another one, another one. I hope you guys are trying for your purpose and mission life. You guys are going out there, working hard for it, grinding it out, and getting rewarded for it, because at the end of the day, when we go off the purpose and mission life, good things do happen. Before we get into this whole thing, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I hope that's where I pointed at. And uh, don't forget to hit the not notification bell, so every time I make a video and I upload it, you're the first one to know, baby. All right, so check it out. So I'm going to give you five red flags you need to watch out for. Because when we're in a relationship, not in a relationship, you know, when we're dating someone or we're, we're, we're starting to get serious with someone, there's a lot of emotions that rise up. And it kind of causes us, there's like a lot of dopamine in our brain going on and stuff like that. And we... Because of those of those feelings and they go really through the roof, we see this person as like they're the most beautiful, which um, I, I, which yes, they are. And you're just like, man, you're so lucky. You got to think of this too, that they're, they're lucky as well. But we get so clouded, our judgment gets so clouded because of our emotions. And... That's a red flag. I mean, there's there, and, and, not, excuse me. That's not a red flag, but that's kind of causing you to miss the red flags because this make this person makes you feel good, and they do all this kind of bad. They they kind of do all this bad stuff, and they just let you get away with it. And they just get away with it because you just so high in your emotions. Yo, check it out. Stop getting so high in your emotions, all right? And 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 if you're in that position right now, and Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm able to help you identify these red flags. And if you're not in that position, cool. All right. So, number one, they rush into a relationship forward too quickly. They rush into the relationship too fast. So, ideally, when you are dating someone or you first meet someone, ideally, you want to wait three to six months to make it into a relationship. Because you don't know. Let me just say this. To really get to fully know someone, to have an idea, a really good idea to know someone or and have a really good idea about dating them it really takes about six months flat out it takes about six months to really have the idea if you want to move forward with this person or not it takes six months six and you know there's a lot of people that get into relationships after two weeks three weeks four weeks i mean i've made i made that mistake i've did that before i got into a relationship after a month um, then there were time, there was a time where I got into a relationship after three and a half months <laughs> and that girl was like, I was about to walk away because you took so long, but that's good for me to do that because that kind of tells me I don't rush into things too fast. And not only that, I'm very patient. I'm not in a rush to get into a relationship. I like to explore, not only explore, but I like to get to know who this person really is because you can change if I'm in a relationship with you. Basically, and then if if I got into a relationship with someone after a month, the second, third, fourth, fifth, they can change up so quick, and you have no idea where this came from. You didn't see this in the when you were just getting to know them, but when you spend so much time getting to know them, and it takes up to six months, you have the idea of who you're getting who you're getting involved with, and. You can make the decision to go into a relationship or not. So number two is that they're secretive about the little things. Could you imagine that if they're going to be so little secretive about the little things, they're going to do it the same thing with the big things? Can you imagine like the big things that they'll be secretive about? That's first off, trust is, there, there's, there's already going to be trust issues with you because they're, because your significant other is being secretive. When someone is being secretive, they are per, they are portraying that. They can't be trusted. They're 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 showing that they can't be trusted, and being secretive is not the way to go. When you're in a relationship with someone, communication is a two way street, and it's be real, be honest. I mean, if you're being honest and you're real about it, no one's gonna hate you for it. But if you're gonna be secretive about it and hold the little things, uh, there's gonna be some spite. So let me just put that. Number three is they don't want to be labeled into a relate. They don't want to be relate labeled a relationship after a few months of dating. Uh, so labels, yeah, labels are. 
I have a very interesting because t- when it comes to being labeled into a relationship, I don't like to call it as a labeled because like when you get to know the person and you made the decision to, you know, take take the take the dating to another step forward into being a relationship, it's not really a label. It's like it's more than just a label. You're just taking your 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 relationship to the next level. I mean, nothing is changed. So but when they don't want to be labeled, they, when they don't want to tell people about the relationship, especially after a few months of dating, and they keep it, they keep it a secret from their parents or their friends and stuff like that. That's a red flag, because if they don't want to tell people, it's kind of like, am I going to be ashamed for this? Am I not going to be ashamed for that? They're seeking approval, bef- and they're seeking approval with others, and that's having doubts of the decision they made of dating you. So think about that because if you were, if you already got into that position, then you know really elaborate like really look at it. One of the relationships that I was in, the one of the girls, uh, she didn't want to tell her family that I was dating her, and this was back in twenty seventeen that I she didn't want to tell her family, and I was just like, that's weird. We've known each other for this amount of months, and okay. So I already saw the whole thing going to a downward spiral anyway. So just a red flag to keep in mind of. Right? They keep in number four, they keep score about the things you've done. They keep score on all the things that you've done. Like if you if you did if you did something in the past, if you did something in the past, you know, it's a little thing, right? It's a little thing. You know, you guys solved it, whatever. But something else comes up, they use that against you. That is a red flag. Why are you being that, that? That's like a narcissist. You know, they're keeping scores against you, and not only that, they're they're demoralizing you. They're making you feel guilty, and they question about they they, they question everything about you, and it, it, it's a total spin around. Don't be with someone like that. If they're gonna keep scores on you. Tell them to keep scores on the way out of the door. Walk out. Walk away. Be. Uh, with someone who would appreciate you more and that doesn't keep scores number five they don't apologize for bad behavior so let me just say that i don't know if you guys saw one of the last videos i made about one of the relationships that i was in but when i when when i was going through the bad behavior when i got the silent treatment after four and a half hours and then the next one i got disrespect and the third one i got disrespect that person hardly ever apologized so they never apologized, and then the third time they apologized, and that was the time where I was just fed up, and I'm not going to put up with it anymore. So if you get walked over on, if someone's going to like mistreat you, disrespect you, and they don't apologize for it, but you guys, you guys made up, but they don't apologize for their actions, you need to look out for that red flag, because if they're not going to apologize for their bad behavior, then just imagine the things that they will do to you, and they'll do more to you, and 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 not apologizing for bad behavior is just the i think it's one of the biggest red flags because if you can't acknowledge that that they're not apologizing for the bad behavior you deserve to get walked over i'm just gonna tell you that you deserve you deserve it and and i don't mean it and i and and sorry to be truthful about it but you deserve it why because you're not acknowledging it because you're so high and clouded with emotions and it's clouding your judgment so just put that out there. And if you're someone that's looking to get over your ex, of course, you can get my brand new book called 10 Simple Tips to Get Over Your Ex out on Amazon right now. And if you guys like my, if you guys like my videos, you can contribute by your, uh, with donations. There's a PayPal link and a Venmo link. Your donations are appreciated. And if you guys find this information valuable, I want you to drop a like, drop a comment, drop a share. And of course, it is your man's Mr. Dominic Cruz coming at you with another video. Yes, another one, another one, another one. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take it easy.